This week on Wrestling Mayhem Show, we talk about why Brock Lesnar will never be your friend, Hell in a Cell, that shield blue balls, and so much more mayhem. Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hello, everybody. It's the Wrestling Mayhem Show 492. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron. On the Twitter in the Mayhem Studios here in Pittsburgh, PA, ready to get mayhemy. Uh, we're going to be talking about professional wrestling of the mainstream variety and having a lot of fun here tonight with you guys over this next far too long to have a podcast. Uh, with me on my uh, magical journey of wonderfulness is the man from the inner depths of Pittsburgh, Papa Lunchbox, back from his assignment. Hello, Sir. Good evening. I'm coming to you from the confluence of the three rivers. You may notice that if you listen closely, you can hear my gills because I'm spending a week as a fish person on a dare. This shouldn't interfere with the show at all, aside from my occasional kelp munching and hook dodging. Well, there you go. There you go. At DJ Lunchbox on the Twitter, if you want to ask him what any of that possibly meant. Also with us from, uh, also with us from San Antonio, Texas where I believe my mortgage people are, uh, is Eamon, the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling. How are you doing? Hello, Sorgatron. I'm doing fantastic. How are you? How are you, Sorg? I tell you, nobody I talk on customer service from San Antonio has an accent, and neither do you. That's because we're in America. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, that's not what I'm, I meant. I'm an American, sorry. Okay, okay. Um, also with <laughs> us from Poughkeepsie, New York, the only one on the team that has an actual future endeavor letter from WWE. He is Mad Mike. Sorg, I, I, I may stare at that letter every single day, and I just wonder, what are my future endeavors? Still trying to figure that, as are we all. You can check out uh, everything going on, WrestlingMayhemShow.com, for more from this show, and subscribe to an iTunes, Twitter, Stitcher, all kinds of stuff, social media. The Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group is where a lot of conversation is happening. I hope that you can join us over there. Uh, we're it's, it's a lot of conversation. That's where everybody touches base, kind of throughout the week, and the things that are interesting us, including this article I just found of Best Western Bay Harbor and Hulk Hogan Restaurant went for thirty four point five million dollars. Thank you, Matt Carlins, for that keeping us informed, and also just random paid random pictures of page so there's that happening uh so uh please uh, join us over there and also you can uh drop us a line we have a voicemail later in the show from our friend in the mainstream media about the shield and how his wife took it uh 412 wms 0 and i'm just realizing how that turn of phrase might not have worked out so well and you can also drop us a line to our email address Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. And you can join us here live every Tuesday night at live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And join us for uh, three hours plus sometimes of wrestling action between this and the Indie Mayhem Show. Hey, who do we got on the Indie Mayhem Show coming up this week, uh, Eamon? A little bit of preview action. Uh Uh-oh. Uh oh, we have a rough internet connection, is what we may have. Uh, so we'll see what's going on there. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, you can also support us on patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show, as many are, and many more are here uh, as we're going. I'm going to get an updated tally. But of course, our friend Ciro from the wrestling revolution.net has been supporting us since the very beginning. And also, boo diggity! A good friend, Ed Burke, who's been joining us on the Twitters, and I will not try to say his Twitter and misrepresent it like I did last week. It's uh, Ed Burke 37. Ed Burke 37. Thank you very much, Mad Mike. And also, uh, Jen Carlins is now supporting us on uh, the Patreon as well. So thank you, everybody, uh, for, 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 throwing your, for throwing your bucks in there and, uh, and, 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 and helping out the show 
and uh, and 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 helping to support it. Thank you very much, Eamon. Who do we have on Indie Mayhem show? <laughs> Literally, when you said it, I cut out. Uh, we have uh, owner of Main Event Pro Wrestling Texas. Uh, uh, one, the one and only Mark Vaughn will be on. Very excited to have him, have him on this week. So it'll be a good interview. I love our new angle we have on you now. So <laughs> it's fantastic, right? It's right. Great. Internet. I'm, I'm what you call the I'm what you call the MacGyver podcast, except without any actual. MacGyvering skills. <laughs> right. And you know, I just tech, duct tape and, and bubble gum, right? And that's all applied to your yes. phone right now. And so. we're all out of bubble gum. That's right. And it's because we keep using it to fix his internet connection. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's get into I, I think the big thing we need <laughs> to start off with this past week or this coming up weekend, Hell in a Cell is going to happen. And we're going to talk specifically about Brock Lesnar here uh, in the segment after. But first of all, let's just take a look at Hell in a Cell itself. What's coming up? What do we expect out of this special event, pay per view, whatever the heck we call these things these days? And uh, and 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 yeah, you know, what is the state of WWE right now, kind of around this? Uh, first of all, well, I'll throw this out there. What match are you guys looking forward to the most, Mike? Um, I am looking forward to hopefully Sasha Banks beating John Cena for the United States title. <laughs> okay, because that's because they have a. Um, uh, a, 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 a U.S. Open, open Challenge, challenge so, yeah. going on. Yeah. Fail, failing that, I guess Tyler Breeze will suffice. Okay, okay. That will be that'll be acceptable. As long as it's somebody NXT, right? So, mm-hmm. All right, all right. Uh, but uh, other than that, uh, what about you, Eamon? Good. Probably, honestly, the John Cena Open Challenge, going back to it. That's. I mean, I think it's solely from the fact that there is a big mystery about it. I think that's the one intriguing kind of aspect and you don't really see that a lot on WWE pay-per-view so I mean that's interesting to me I don't know about the rest of the card because I don't know it just seems like a bunch of rematches you know Mm -hmm. well you know kind of reading and also reading the tea leaves it it is kind of uh uh uh, kind of the idea is going to be John Cena's taking time off after this uh uh, yeah so so we could just have whoever comes out is going to be the champion potentially so that's going to be a big rub for any of them. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I hope so. I hope that's the case. Because uh, I, I I think I've said it in the past on the show, I feel like the whole point of seeing having this championship and building it up to this degree is for when they do do an open challenge that, you know, and when he needs to pass it off to somebody and then needs to get them over. Um, you know, I think they have every capability to do that, you know, and and I hope they do, especially if the rumors are true with Cena leaping for a little while. Mm-hmm. Um, LB, what are you looking forward to uh, going into Hell in a Cell? Well, I've been saying this uh, uh, week after week that uh, Kane is absolutely doing some of the best work of his career right now. So uh, I am uh, very much looking forward to uh, the New Day versus the Dudley Boys uh, because I like anything that the New Day does. There is little to no opportunity for disappointment there where Seth Rollins versus Kane could have its problems. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so, uh, and I'm really looking forward to, uh, dare I say, Sorg, what are you looking forward to? Dare I say Wyatt and Reigns? Am I crazy? Uh, I think that might be all befuddled now because Orton is injured. So, the rest of the Wyatt family and Dean Ambrose have nothing to do for the pay-per-view. Well, yeah. Yeah, but why is that going to, you think they're just going to get everybody involved in this thing? Absolutely. Sure. Just fill it with assholes. I, I, what? <laughs> just a cage of assholes. Just a cage of assholes. <laughs> <laughs> just a rage in the cage. I, I, I think, I think this has an opportunity because I, I really, I, I don't know, maybe you guys are tired of it. I, I thought I got reignited a little bit last night when I woke up from my nap and realized, what, the show's back together? What's happening here? Um, and I thought that was a really cool uh, extra moment that they had a chance to do last night uh, and, and rolling into this. I, I, I think with the air about the Wyatts and, of course, the history with, with uh, Reigns and Ambrose uh, and, and seeing what happened last time that these guys were involved in a Hell in a Cell uh, a year ago, uh, I, I think I think we're we're we can look forward to some kind of Undertaker type theatrics again, like we had last year. 
Um, I'm kind of looking forward to that and see what they can do with that. Um, I, I, I don't, uh, concerning the finality of, of the other Hell in a Cell, yeah, I think there might be some goofy stuff in here, but it really kind of has to be a feud ender. And, and, and then I'm hoping that we see uh, Reigns and Wyatt really kind of step it up here, uh, which I, I think both have been doing a tremendous job even going into this. See, I'm not, I don't think I, it has to be a, I don't think it has to be a feud ender. Doesn't have because, to be, but you kind of hope it is since it's Hell in a Cell, right? I do, but but Survivor Series is the next pay per view. Mm-hmm. And like the and Wyatt family, there's, is there's the now four ever. Wyatt, there's now four Wyatt members. It kind of reads Survivor Series match. True, true, true. Yeah, because I mean, you can easily have the four members of the Wyatt family versus Ambrose Reigns. Uh, insert person A and B in there, like Randy Orton if he's healed. If not. Throw in the primetime players because why not? Right, right, right. Um, like, as far as, it, it kind of it kind of writes itself for a Survivor Series match. Mm-hmm. And, and you mentioned uh, in, in passing there earlier, LB. Uh, of course, the the title match, Kane and Seth. I mean, this is this is kind of a placeholder match here, but I think they've had a lot of fun with it. I was kind of sad that we didn't get any Kane this week leading into it, though. Is he? Why was he off the go home show for this? And I, I know it's not really as important of a match as as say you know Brock and Taker, right? Mm. I don't know. That is a good question. Maybe maybe they're like, well, we don't show him. The fans are just going to be salivating for more. Yep, got to have uh, that. Got to have that I, cane. I think they also had to do some damage control because of the apparent injury of Randy Orton. Mm-hmm. So they had to essentially scrap the whole uh, pre-show match that they had, establish a new one, and then kind of blow off the feud, too, before the big one-on-one match. So, I mean, plus, uh, with last... Because this is something WWE has been doing a while, where they will have the blow-off for the main event a week before the go-home show. Like, last week, you had Kane book Rollins in a, in a, in a lumberjack match. Right. How much more of a blow off do you get before that? Like That's you don't want you don't want to have them have interaction two weeks in a row before their title match, especially when they just wrestled each other. It seems yeah, like the only difference is the titles on the line. Doesn't it seem like they're still booking a two hour raw and stretching it to three hours somehow here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow, well, we didn't yeah, have time I, for yeah. this. You have three hours. They and might just be booking. Month. They might. Oh, sorry, Amy. Go ahead. No, that is fine. I was just gonna say, going to your point, like. Like even with the, the, the pre-show match, you, we already had the pre-show match on Raw, mm-hmm. and we just gonna do it again. Like, like I don't get it. You know, I, like I feel like they're just booking for Hulu at this point. <laughs> they might be. They might be to a certain, <laughs> certain, certain degree. Charlotte, Nikki, Bella. I, I think anytime we have Charlotte in there, uh, there's a lot of opportunity uh, to have something cool. And it's, we know it's gonna, not going to be a complicated match that's on Raw. Again, I slept through whatever the heck they did this week. So I, I unless I missed something there. Um, uh, Sorg, you missed a great Star Wars trailer. That's what you missed. Oh, oh. oh my God! Can we talk about the Star Wars trailer, please? <laughs> no, we, we, we <laughs> can't officially, but but we don't we don't have a show for that right now. But man, so good. <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, uh, hey, yeah, I'll probably talk about it on Panel Riot. That's tangentially connected. But I can tell you that I watched it and I got real excited, and then I watched it again and I cried and then I went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> that's good okay all right and of course kevin owens ryback um I, hey owens i think is representing very well with the belt so i sure um, do like to see him do stuff mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. power by mark henry yeah I, is it just me do we wish that it was kevin owens versus any of the opponents he's had on the past couple of bras as as opposed to ryback oh yeah anyone else anyone like, in the company like I want to see Kevin Owens and Kalisto again, just for the hell of it. Mm-hmm. Because that was fun. Mm-hmm. That was fun. That could be. That could or be. Fu- or fuck it, Kevin Owens versus the Lucha Dragons. This, I mean, it, it really is like the other side of the John Cena Open Challenge, isn't it? Kind of. Kevin Owens is the most winningest Intercontinental Champion in, in a while. In the last ten years, a decade, mm-hmm. at least a decade. <laughs> That's good. Wade, that. Wade Barrett. Wade Barrett just listens to that theme music. And cries into his robe. Wait, Bear, no, Wade Bear is just like, wait, you can actually hold that belt and win matches? What's happening? <laughs> I'm afraid I've got some bad news. 
that, that, that's yeah. that's the comment that they 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 cut out of the intercontinental champion uh table for three was so why is why can't any of us win when we hold that belt yet still hold the belt <laughs> I, I like i've never really got that uh oh my god you know what it is right all right and that table for three they had an exorcism for the intercontinental title and it worked uh, kevin one. owens wins matches now also cut off the part where the table shook and ra- rose above the floor and, and spilled uh, 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 Ryback's meat on the floor, but he ate it anyways because he's hungry because he needs to feed him more. Um, and Pat Harrison just came up from underneath the table and they thought he was a scary ghost, but he's really just kind of old. But they didn't question why he was underneath the table. <laughs> you never question it because it's Pat Patterson and Pat Patterson does what Pat Patterson does. He's single, fellas. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> where did that go? Um, <laughs> we well that that's when we saw Legends House and everyone was like, "Oh, Pat Harrison." Oh, oh. Hey guys, hell in a cell, Sork. If you want to support <laughs> some other questionable wrestling, check out indiewrestling.us. There's a lot of stuff going on there. And speaking of WWE guys and Canadians, uh, we actually are just adding. Uh, I put the file the cross in the. The, the T's and dot in the I's right now. Have you heard of a little group called uh, Border City Wrestling? Border no, City sort Wrestling? Yeah, uh, sort of, I uh, think. Somebody should have. Amen. Maybe. Maybe. Well, hey, Maybe. they're Canadian. And if and what's a Canadian wrestling show without, I don't know, Brett the Hitman Hart? And why not? Scott Steiner, too. Uh, but there's some good stuff here. And even uh, a really interesting show that's going to be going up East Weeds West that they did uh, a few months ago, uh, their crossover show with New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, you can check all that out. That's available uh, coming up here on uh, the Indie Wrestling US. Some uh, great matches on there. Booker T, of course, a part of that. East meets West. Scott Demore is a part of this. I believe he's the head guy of this promotion, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but uh, you know, and also some some familiar names. Joe Dombrowski on commentary with Matt Stryker. So that's going to be fun for you Lucha Underground fans and your international wrestling cartel fan, fans. Um, and a bunch of Japanese names that I don't know. Should I try? Congo Kong is on that. I'm a fan of Congo Kong. Uh, I know that. Uh, not Japanese, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm aware of that. Uh, well, we don't know where he's from. I, I don't know. He could be Japanese. He could be from Japan. Um but uh, a lot of good fun there uh, happening. And, of course, check out all of our other friends. Uh, International Wrestling Cartel, the big IWC Unbreakable coming very soon. IndieWrestling.us. RWA's Bloody Harvest 2015, which will be given away to some people that contributed to last week's big question. Stay, stay tuned on this show to find out uh, how you can win IWC's Unbreakable as well. And uh, But go support that. Best of Dalton Castle Volumes 1 and 2. Uh, and, and, and so, so much more. 605 Wrestling, Prime Wrestling, Finding Zach Gowan, Montreal Theory, Z- uh, uh, Legend of Virgil and his traveling merchandise table, all available, digital download, and some on DVD over at IndieWrestling.us. IndieWrestling.us, IndieWrestling.us. Go sign up for the uh, email list so you don't miss a beat on what's coming out there. We might have some very fun stuff we're working on coming up very soon for some on-demand, perhaps. All right, let's get back into the more popular of the pro re- professional wrestling, which brings us back around to podcasts somehow. Hmm. Uh, of course, Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar uh, talked about hunting and 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 trucks and stuff with his good buddy Stone Cold Steve Austin on the Stone Cold Podcast last night on the WWE Network. Uh, and 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 uh, most of us have had a chance to digest that morsel, and it got a little it got a little juicy towards the end. And we talked about things, and and I know uh, I, I think it was Matt Carlin's on the group was talking about. And hopefully, you guys are in the chat too. Uh, to kind of discuss as well, but uh, this idea, you know, and I'm paraphrasing what I read, but uh, I think they really kind of got it dead on. Uh, really, uh, Brock Lesnar is really impressive because, uh, you know, how many times do you say, I don't like people, I don't like people, I don't like people, which really does paint him as an asshole, yes, uh, but also just like, hey, guys, he's an introvert. What were we just talking about on WMS Gold? You know, um, what were we just talking if about? He wasn't, if he wasn't a big muscle bound pile of muscles, he'd just be a nerd. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, it, also, nerd. it also doesn't help that he grew up like not near people. Right. Like he grew up on a farm and right. his main interaction was with like the animals and his family, presumably. 
and that's basically it. Like most of us, we were born in suburbia, so we had to talk to people every day. I'm sure there are probably like weeks in the summertime where Brock Lesnar did not see people. But but the line the line that I read from one of you guys out here, I'm, I'm so sorry, I'm not going to be able to credit this at least right away. Uh, hopefully hopefully later show I'll be able to catch where it was. Um, but you know, uh, the wrestling is a promotion where we've we've talked about, especially Eamon, you and I with guys over on Indie Mayhem about how you interact with people backstage. Everybody, you got to make sure you shake everybody's hands uh, and, and the politics and how people, how many people don't work for certain feds because maybe they got drunk and they weren't great people around other people. Right. And that somebody right. like him that is an introvert that was not great with people still succeeded despite that in, uh, in such an industry. I, I think personally, and this maybe just, I mean, this is just my opinion. I think it comes from a point of, like, I agree that Brock Lesnar is clearly an introvert. He clearly doesn't like being around people. Um, I wouldn't say that doesn't mean he's necessarily not professional. No. Like, I think he, I think he knows how to do business. And I think a a couple from his childhood, obviously, but I also think given, it feels like the way he was raised in the wrestling business is that he treats it like a business. He kind of treats it as, you know, go get all the money that you can, you know, get all the success that you can in wrestling, but don't don't act like this is something bigger than what it is. Mm-hmm. D- you know, don't hold on to the fact that, you know, the people around you are your friends or your family or anything like that. You know, it's it's a business. It's a job. He said it a lot during the interview. He's like, I got I, you know, I treat it as if I'm going to work. You know, we clock in and clock out. People clock in and clock out all the time. I just do the same thing. Right. You right, know? right. Stone Cold is a work friend, basically. <laughs> yeah. And that's about it. <laughs> what What will be? No, it, I, I, I love that that's, uh, that's their relationship. It's like, oh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's Stone Cold Steve Austin. It's just some guy I work with. Yeah, yeah, basically, because they're like, yeah. they're, they're like yeah. Farm. Yeah, you, you know, my work friends, Steve, Mark, and Glenn. Yeah, they're just hanging out. <laughs> and exactly. Paul, gotta love Paul. I mean, Paul's kind of my boss, but still, he's a good guy. It's like, like he also kept referring to the Rockets, Dwayne. Like, I feel like that. I mean, I feel like that's for a reason. Like, he sees them as who they are. He sees them. He sees them as coworkers. He sees them as anything beyond that. I think the only person in wrestling he sees as an actual friend is Paul Heyman. Mm-hmm. Yep. Probably Angle too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, would, I would say Angle. I'm sure he and Angle probably had a a closer. Like I'm sure they didn't talk about much because obvious reasons. But I'm sure he and Angle got along really well. It sounds like they had a very competitive relationship. They they kind of sound like Goku and Vegeta. A little bit, a little bit. Uh, yeah. There was I don't I I believe in Angle's book. There was a discussion about the one time that they uh, they sh- they did a shoot fight, uh, like like before a Raw sometime. They got in the ring and just kind of went at it, and how uh, how humbled uh, Brock was afterwards after that one. Uh, so I mean, you gotta look. I mean, yo, Brock looked huge next to Angle in that match, right? Yeah, and mm-hmm. uh, and, and and certainly I, I think well, and also Angle. <laughs> <laughs> Angle uh, uh, practiced for basically practiced for the Olympics by going to Russia and fighting Russians who are very much bigger than him, right? Yeah. Like, like that was just how he learned to do it. So somebody like Brock was probably easy pickings for for him in that kind of context. Because while well, uh, Brock was awesome and he was a multi-time NCAA champion, that was still against other people in the NCAA not other countries that were larger than him. Um, not that I don't know how many people would have had much size on them at that point. But um, anyways, no, I, I thought it was interesting. I thought it was a good show. I mean, it wasn't terribly revealing, I thought. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that whole kind of side of things, like, like no, this is the way I am. You know, um, they really got into a bit about the UFC. Uh, it was very frank about things, about his conversations with Vince and how they kind of left things. Um, even I, I, that was, and I think, I think Eamon, you know, and I think you're alluding to this a little bit too, but you get, I think us wrestling fans may be offended by it because he's not passionate about the thing that he's doing. Yeah. But he is, but it's not in the way that we, that we want him to be passionate the way we're passionate about things. Right. That's true. I, I, I consider him 
I consider him along the same mindset as like a Kevin Nash, who's always the guy that's very adamant of like, this is a business. True. Uh, you know, God forbid I treat this like a business and I look to make money. You know, yeah, and like, I can understand that aspect of it. Right. Yeah, like Kevin Nash always said, you can make friends or you can make money, and I already have enough friends. So, yeah. 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 I, yeah, yeah like you kind of mentioned, it was a fairly pedestrian podcast. The only juicy stuff, juiciest stuff that came from it was, um, I feel like, uh, when they mentioned the Brock Angle match at WrestleMania 19, and Brock was very adamant in saying that somebody told him to do the, uh, the uh, shooting star press. Hmm. Yeah, this year, I still want to know who uh, it was. So that was interesting. I want to know who it was because he wouldn't throw the name under the bus. But I'm curious. Could have been Vince. You never know. It could have been possibly. Could have been Angle or uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Kurt Henning. That, yeah. <laughs> well, I, Kurt Henning see, I want to see the training. I want to see the training between Brock Lesnar and Kurt Henning. Yeah, that's what I want to see. Yeah. that sounds like it would have been a lot of fun. Somewhere, somewhere, I do have a DVD of a Before There Were Stars with the Minnesota Wrecking Crew of uh, him and Shelton Benjamin in a match. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to Shelton Benjamin got a plug on the podcast. So I'm Benjamin, who was not here with. He said, like, not with us anymore, like as if he's well, dead no, or he something. Wasn't, he wasn't. He well, wasn't I know, on I graphic. They had a graphic up. Yeah, uh, they didn't show him on the graphic. Of <laughs> prototype. Uh, Leviathan, Randy Orton, and Brock Lesnar. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. But, the only and the only other interesting part was uh, like uh, Austin tried to bring up the uh, the lawsuit between him and WWE when Lesnar left after WrestleMania. Yeah, and he was just kind of like, I don't want to talk about that. Mm-hmm. Like he was kind of they they skirted it very much. But uh, yeah, I, it, other than that, it was <laughs> they talked a lot about southern things mm-hmm. and they talked and a they lot never, about shooting guns and. They never like went to the place that the uh, Heyman and Austin podcast went. Yeah, where like right at the end, you know, they turned it into a, a, a work shoot or whatever, where like there was possibility of a match, and Brock was just like, "Nope, I'm good," and the Undertaker, and that's basically it. And they never, they didn't even talk about it. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it. it cut a mini promo at the end, and that was it, basically, right? So yeah. he's like, oh, he, like he went into a different mode. And that was it. And, and didn't really talk about Undertaker, respect for Undertaker, etc. He did, as mentioned in the chat room, uh, uh, Carlin, Matt Carlin's like the, uh, he did like him talking about riding with Taker and King. Can you imagine that crew crammed into a, some mid-sized rental car? Actually, probably got a <laughs> sedan. So, there you go. Uh, uh, Garza, uh, I, is, I, oh, go ahead. I think it's incredible that this even happens that mm-hmm. we have these uh, these interviews and these pod, like Steve Austin podcasts and stuff nowadays. Because I remember a time when I found out that uh, Bret Hart would occasionally go down to Texas and hang out with Steve Austin and bullshit about the old days. Yeah, and I was yeah. fucking blown away. <laughs> and now that's just such a common thing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just just the amount in such a short period of time that wrestling has been willing to pull back the curtain. On, uh, on the wrestlers' lives and things like that, it's 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 really fascinating to look at in perspective. Mm-hmm. Especially, well, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna get even more of that with uh, Breaking Ground, right? And uh, that's gonna be fantastic. I cannot. It's ten weeks and narrated by William Shatner for Christ's oh. sake. That's that's gonna be awesome. <laughs> like that's that may literally be one of the best things the network will ever do. Right. Right. Yeah, they're putting a lot into it, and I think a pretty serious producer is behind it too, right? I, I, uh, I didn't know who the producer was. I, I I read William Shatner and I stopped. I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> I, I don't care. You need nothing else beyond that, right? Like, if he starts singing Sasha Banks' theme song, <laughs> I, I'm game over. I'm out. I'm out. I, I I will. That that's it. That's it. I will just listen to that eternally on a loop forever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I had something else here. Oh, uh, uh, Carlin's is saying uh, Hennig teaching Brock to hit the no look half court basketball shots and throw touchdowns to himself. <laughs> oh, I did like uh, Brock saying how difficult the NFL training camp was. Yes, which is funny since I, the I NFL that people was really interesting. Which is the, the NFL people coming and say how hard wrestling training is. You know, mm-hmm. it, it's really interesting. <laughs> So um, yeah, like Brock saying that that kind of humbled him because it was the first time he really wasn't good at something. Like that was really interesting to me. I'm like, 
wow, that must have been incredibly difficult because he really wanted to do that. Like right. he left a WrestleMania payday for that. Right, right. But also really interesting. And, and, and he he definitely finds himself in a spot a lot of people don't where he says, I like being in the ring. I don't like to travel. Well, Which, I, think, yeah. I think that's a lot of people. I yeah, yeah. But but again, but again, you know, he was but I mean, again, he's not a guy that he loved it. He loved doing it. But he didn't have the passion to push through all the rest of that stuff. I mean, the guy was had been in the business for like two years in WWE. What was he around for? Maybe two years before that in in, in developmental, maybe. Probably so, not even that long. I mean, I mean, just thinking that versus the people like uh, Kevin Owens that took fifteen years to get to this point. You know, uh, I mean, I just, I don't know. I I, I don't want to think less of, of a Brock Lesnar because of that. Like he made a decision. He just like this isn't for me. You know. This is this 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 isn't worth that, you know. Making the money is nice, but I could go try something else. And he made himself a good bit of money over those two years, and had the option to go do something else, right? And maybe that's the I, other I thing. Th- I think there's aspects where where you can kind of see. I mean, people could call Brock selfish or whatever, but there's also aspects of of, of humbleness from him, like like in in certain aspects, like when you mentioned when he was starting out in wrestling, like like. He had, the, I feel there was a humble aspect to him, mm-hmm. you know, just because he wasn't a people person, just because he was like, he didn't like the everything surrounding wrestling. I do think he was, there were, there were parts of him that were still very humble. Right. You know? Right. Right. But uh, it'll be, it was interesting looking to him. It wasn't as controversial as I feel like uh, they were making it up to be. Um, yeah. Sometimes Stone Cold just likes to talk about hunting with his guests. Mm-hmm. you know <laughs> you know it's it's fine you know and uh it, we'll see we'll see how, how they keep going i mean hey that's why i can't listen to his podcast on a regular basis in general you know mm-hmm. it just doesn't hit a chord with me like that uh like a cold cabana one does so and and i've heard people saying how cold cabana's podcast does really kind of rubs them the wrong way these days too so i don't know uh, I think I being, uh never mind that's what? totally off topic. Never mind. That's fine. I don't know. Where, where, what do you got going on? I was I, Colt Cabana and podcast. I was curious if anybody here had seen the uh, the episode of Marin that Colt Cabana was oh, on. Oh, no, not yet. Not yet. He was talking about that on the recent one. I want to check that out for sure. Yeah. So Whenever whenever I get a slice of time to actually sit down and watch something, I <laughs> I go through my like little mental Rolodex list, and I always forget that one. Mm-hmm. I want to see it eventually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. Uh, so, uh, all right. On that note, hey, let's uh, uh, first let's give a shout out to our buddies at Slice on Broadway. They're up here uh, if you're around Pittsburgh. I know a few of you are. A lot of you are not, but that's okay. A lot of you visit Pittsburgh for one reason or another, maybe a business, just to be a pal, or whatever the case may be. Or uh, I mean, Mad Mike is going to be coming here to Pittsburgh in a few weeks. You got to be stopping by for some slice, buddy. Sorg, Sorg, I'm going to go both Slice on Broadway locations. Both locations. I'm, I'm, I'm oh go man. Both. I'm going to go both. And you know what? I'm going to compare them. And guess what? They're both going to be fantastic. Yes, they are. Well, they better both be fantastic. They got the same people between the two locations. So <laughs> more or less. So there's definitely a little bit of a um, a uh, quality control, I guess you could say, there. I mean, this isn't like a franchise, man. This is Thor, this is Thor. still... Hmm. Thor, did we ever hear about the chicken nuggets on pizza? Because I may request it when i go down there i'm not i don't know you can go talk to them you might have to bring your own chicken nuggets can you just bring your own chicken nuggets and they'll put it on the pizza and just cook it in with the rest of it because i don't know if they'll have chicken nuggets on hand okay all right i think i can do that that's the only qualification it's got to be something in the kitchen okay gotcha and now they they got some great stuff i mean i'm i mean the gonzo which isn't even on the menu i highly recommend it it's kind of the secret menu uh kind of thing it's like the secret secret chipotle menu is it am am i thinking the right one um, or maybe I'm thinking the hack Chipotle. Yeah. There's another one like that, right? I don't know. Uh, Eamon, you know the Chipotle down there. I know, I know Chipotle is a thing. <laughs> oh, okay. Chipotle. I thought you were a Chipotle you... goer. My bad. My bad. You know. No, I was. No, I do. I am. I have a drug secret menu. But <laughs> it's all about the secret it's... menu. There's a secret menu here. Or maybe it'll be somebody's birthday, and they'll make a uh, pizza in the shape of Hello Kitty. You never know. They like experimenting in the pizza 
the artisan pizza. St- okay, not the artisan because artisan sounds too douchebaggy. Uh, the 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 special <laughs> pizza the arts. The craft pizza store. The craft, the craft. pizza store. Yes. Craft. Wait, wait, that sounds the weird craft. too. But craft. they do have craft, craft beers at the one location. This is the weirdest. Sorry, slice on Broadway, but we love you. Slice on Broadway dot com. Slice on Broadway dot com. Slice on Broadway dot com. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with a perfect pepperoni pizza. Thank you so much. Check them out. PGH underscore slice on the Twitter. Let them know you heard about them on the Wrestling Mayhem show. And, of course, uh, look for Slice on Broadway on the Facebooks and the Instagrams. We'll be right back after this look of everything last week when our buddy Sawtooth Willie on Sorgatron Media. Yeah. I don't mean to be indelicate, but, uh, uh, do we have children to watch this show? Because I feel that perhaps they should not be watching this one. I'm here with a fellow podcaster, Buzzy Torek of the Epicast Network. If you just want to try a podcast, I'd say start doing them on your phone, get good at it. Like, we have an, a popular podcast from Pittsburgh that is done all on an iPhone. Mm-hmm. I despise listening to it when I engineer it, but it, it, it's there and people people don't don't seem to mind. It. Just record, record your conversations and start getting better at, at having those conversations. That is... Jay Briscoe. There is no hype. There is no hyperbole. But it was a Ring of Honor camp. He walked in. He was one of the coaches, and he had a stalk of raw broccoli in his hand, and he's taking chunks out of it as he's giving us instructions and telling us what to do and how to, uh, you know, where to be aggressive and where, and just raw broccoli. And there was a part of me like, is he helping with me? Is is this? <laughs> um, I understood that that it was a business and that you were working for someone and that you were taking someone's ideas and um, influence and making it your own. And I believe that you have to be extremely patient. I've been extremely patient. I didn't expect anything to be just handed over to me. I've wanted to work for it and I wanted to earn it. And it, it you know, I feel like if it's given to you, um, it's kind of, I don't know, it kind of depreciates it and devalues it. I'm probably not your typical use case. I'm at my desk when I'm working for work, which is low process or low memory intensive. I'm up here for the show. When I'm actually working on video, I'm usually on my couch. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so like right now I'm plugged into this huge monitor, right? If I, if I were to edit video and, and hit render or, or save or whatever to, to actually render the video, I would grab the laptop and take it with me and open it up. Check out all of that on SorgatronMedia.com. So many different shows. Uh, Sawtooth Willie. Uh, awesome cast, awesome chats, and so much more. Thank you, everybody, joining us. Chris LaRusso, of course, last week had a big, big show uh, this past week at Remix Pro Wrestling, uh, including a friend of the show, Facade, new tag team champions with Matt Hardy. What? Wrap your head around that one. Uh, but I, that, that's I, 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 hands. He's not the TNA champion or anything. That's true, I, too. I really enjoy half of that tag team. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You can guess what's happened. But in the meantime, let's uh, answer some thought-provoking uh, inquiries of a questionable nature with the big question with Papa Lunchbox. Oh, I've got one. I've got one for you. So I mentioned earlier about uh, uh, about the uh, you know peeking behind the curtain uh, approach that WWE has been taking as of late. How amazing that is! And and uh, I was thinking recently about um, how. Many of its superstars and the uh, the organization itself has really, really embraced social media as a whole um, between Twitter and Facebook and and really just uh, uh, everything that they can lay their it, all the all the digital pies that they can get their advertising fingers into they do. Uh, there was a time when uh, all of their wrestlers were basically on social media lockdown. You know, you couldn't really have an account, and if they did have an account, it was blatant that it was run not by them that it was run by uh somebody in stanford connecticut um so i feel like they've finally finally embraced that and to a degree that a lot of companies and a lot of organizations have not embraced i feel like they're they're uh, uh starting to get ahead of the curve which which makes me really happy because if there's one thing one constant about professional wrestling 
uh, and and, um, and the internet is that people will find something to complain about it at all times, uh, and it feels like these are these are rolling complaints. You know what I mean? Uh, sometimes they they churn to the surface and then they get met and then they go back down and they churn to the surface and, and things like that. And um, uh, as a result, I was thinking about you know the the strengths and the weaknesses that WWE has, and um, uh, how far they've come and what is going to be next for them. What's their next tool that they're going to pull out of their toolbox and, and really surprise us with. So this week, the big question for this week is um, what is currently WWE's biggest strength that it is not yet utilizing? What is their vast untapped resource that is uh, uh, with a big emphasis on the word untapped. Oof. Oof. I feel like I, I need thinky I, time on this. I got, I got a good one. Okay. Their vast video library. Really? Uh-huh. Um, do you realize they have stuff from like the 1950s that they can show us on, on the network? Okay. That they can, like they, they have so much stuff like between all the different companies they have between their own stuff, they could be producing so much more unique content for the network because that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get people to subscribe and if people aren't joining for the new stuff like the pay-per-views and NXT, which, you know, some people might not be that, but if they want to see a lot of the older stuff, they need to be promoting what they have. Like, there's so much stuff that they haven't even tapped into because essentially all they've been putting up right now is old raws and old nitros. Right. But they have so much other stuff that they could put on there. Like they could pull out random clips. Like I remember back on the, uh, the old WWE on demand on the, the cable networks, they would just pull out random like uh, segments and bits mm-hmm. and you could, like you could just click on them and have those accessible and they can still do that with the stuff that they have now. And you can have, you can make it really fun and you can try to educate someone on like they have Lou Thez matches. They have George Hackenschmidt matches. Like they can show, they can try and educate people on the history of wrestling. They can bring in a guy like Jr. or Joey Styles or someone who really knows the business and Garz is asking me if, if they'll really bring in a casual audience, but it will be intriguing enough where I think people will want to check it out. Mm-hmm. I think because I'm not, I'm not just talking fifties. I'm saying that's as far back as they go, but they have like old Ric Flair stuff. They got mm-hmm. old dusty road stuff. Like they could be doing an entire like half hour special on a dusty roads, Ric Flair feud. Like they could be doing all stuff like that. They need to, utilize it more and they can have the current wrestlers talk about stuff talk about this older stuff like maybe stuff that they've never seen like i'd love to hear i'd love to hear like some of the big high flyers we have now talk about matches from the 50s from texas wrestling like i would Mm -hmm. love to see what they think about i think it'd be interesting i'm with you just just uh just to respond to that I, I i think you're right i don't think it needs to be an upfront thing but it's just something they're still doing to kind of flesh things out a bit um no i'm with you on that and they do have a vast library but 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 they also have a vast library they, and they they will continue to trickle it out so they you know and under the radar like it wasn't a huge upfront thing when like primetime wrestling and tuesday night titans came out right but it's it's still like, oh, this is on. I got to go check that out. It gives me another reason to go dive back into that. Even though I don't watch every episode of Tuesday Night Titans because you'd be insane to. Um, you know, I, I, it's still not the most watched thing, which I think is still. I mean, but, but they can put on stuff like OVW. Yeah, it's more like, of a it's more of a it's more of a. Do you, a, you, more of a, Cena fan? Do you yeah. want to see where John Cena started? Right. Do you want to see right, where right. Randy Orton started? Like. You can you can look at Brock Lesnar when he was do in his. Do they his own OVW stuff? Because there's yes, DVDs out. Yes. Okay, so they they did acquire it. They probably bought it from Cornette, I imagine. Yeah. 
Okay, yeah, good. Because so uh, that they, DVD I have is not WWE, and and it's like actually it is like Cornette, like in front of a thing, telling you about all these guys that were like before he was a big star in WWE and and and, and all this stuff uh, before they're showing all these matches with Prototype and, and Minnesota Wrecking Crew. Uh, so no, I I'm with you on that. I I just don't I, you know you got they have to trickle that and they have a plan. And even though we want, why don't we have everything? There's a reason, and that's so you keep subscribing instead of just going watch watching what you want and then that being it, you know. Um, but I'm, I, I could see that. I could see that. But what was the last big thing that they put on there? The big past thing? Yeah, like they they haven't even updated Nitros yet. Like there's no Thunder, there's no SmackDown. I know they're going in chronological order, but seriously. Like, if you if you want to claim to be like Netflix but better, mm-hmm. you need to have a selection as varied as Netflix. I I refute that. If you start digging into Netflix and realize how much stuff is is missing, and Netflix it, Netflix gives a feeling that everything is there, but they're very much trying to get away from that. Um, Netflix has a broad selection, but you don't go there and just presume everything's there anymore. Um, you have a lot and you're pleased when you see things pop up, but, uh, and I think they've kind of changed that a little bit. Uh, and I, to, to an extent, I think WWE Network is very much like, 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 like Netflix in, in that case. Um, because no, you don't have everything, but you have more than enough to get by for right now. It's definitely a lot better, a lot more deeper than that, that, uh, 24 seven on demand, right? So no, it really isn't. Are you kidding me? You only have like... The twenty four seven stuff, you got different shows every month. Right, right. But it's like you took all of that and now you've just like, hey, here's all the shows. But they're not even using all the stuff that was on there. Okay, well, but, but they will, you know. Mm, okay. I mean, that's just like, uh, it, it, well, they they don't have the thing. Well, because I remember specifically there was a thing where um, they had the Raw and SmackDown with with like the commentary and the ECWs with all the commentary. With Joey Styles and everything, they haven't released mm-hmm. those yet, right? Like, I mean, that's something that after everybody's forgotten about them, they'll bring it back, right? I don't think they're going to now because they can just release the whole shows. Right, they can. They don't, they don't have to. They don't have to post produce anything on it. They can, but they, but even that, they'll just maybe just resurface that. Like, hey, here's this thing we did on the network, just they did with the Legends Roundtable. But anyways, Eamon, do you have something? Uh, everything. This was an interesting question, and everything that I kind of thought of was something that they are kind of doing but and so it's hard to say like oh they should be doing this because they are doing it to some degree um the the one i could think of that i think they should definitely do more uh, and do to a greater degree is their relationship with mass media mm-hmm. or, or, or or top media uh particularly like we've seen it a lot nowadays is with like sports center and stuff like that how how they'll kind of break WWE news now, and they're they're not afraid to have Brock Lesnar or John. I think John Cena is going to be on Sports Center this week or for, uh, something along those lines. Um, I would love to see them do go full fledged and do that entirely. Like I, I, it would bring a legitimacy to it, and it would reach an audience that is not always tuning into wrestling. Maybe they are a general sports fan and are intrigued maybe intrigued by what they see um i also think it it legitimizes the people on your roster do it beyond just your brock lesnar's or your your john cena's do it for some of your your mid to lower card talents as well you know it it, treat them as athletes and i feel that in the past couple of years of what they've been kind of Obviously, there's still sports entertainment, but there's a level of athleticism to where they're they really are portraying these people more as athletes as opposed to just like over the top characters. So use aspects like that to help drive that point home. I, I I just feel like we should they could do more of it, and 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 with different people, not not the same people you kind of always see. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I'm still working on mine. LP, do you have one? I do. Um, I think that their uh, uh, great underutilized uh, uh, resource is their fan base, to be honest. Um, I feel like uh, they have a massive amount of people um, all around the world that 
are basically just hanging on whatever tiny morsels that the WWE puts out there. You know, you can have a wrestler who only appears on shows maybe once, uh, like every other week or something like that. And they will have a huge fan base because they are appearing on that show. Um, now the question is, uh, what can they really do with this large group of people that are basically willing to do whatever they want? I don't really know, uh, <laughs> but it just feels like uh, it feels like um, uh, uh, having a bat sitting on the table uh, and not picking it up and using it. You know what I mean? Maybe they can, uh, uh, you know, push a little harder and raise money for uh, for uh, breast cancer research. Instead of just making the ropes pink, they can, you know, set up a special website or have a, a call to action or something like that. They feel um, it feels like they're they're very uh, hesitant when uh, when telling them telling their fans to do things that don't directly benefit the WWE. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know, but I feel like they have such a passionate and such a loyal fan base that they could do something more than just taking their money. I think NXT does stuff like that locally around Florida. So I've seen like Bailey and a few others post stuff online where they do like cancer walks and stuff like that. Yeah. I think they just recently did a Susan G come and walk or something along yeah. those lines. Um, yeah, I, I, I fully agree. Cause I think they'll, you know, whatever you want to say about their, the, you know, popularity of WWE today. They have a, a gigantic audience, and you know the ability to use that audience to your advantage is it's you know a powerful thing to have. I think it. I think the stuff they're doing is well intentioned, but I do agree that they could be doing much more. Uh, uh, and I feel like I don't know. Maybe it's just PR, and maybe it's just me buying into you know their their uh, their person the way they want uh, people to perceive them. But I feel like Triple H and Stephanie McMahon in particular are really trying to portray WWE as this, this thing that is a, you know, an, an active member of the community. You know, it's, it's, it's something that goes beyond just putting on a wrestling show. Right. Right. But most companies of that size do, you know what I mean? Uh, and and mm -hmm. I think they're doing a good job with that. And, 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 and even when they're doing, um, those kinds of ventures there's deal making still happening you know what i mean like and i think that's why you don't have them just kind of going kind of full off because they are still a company and they have to make sure there's a benefit coming to them you know so interesting i'm still at a loss to think of what they because <laughs> i mean i mean wwe is the machine right and, and 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 aside from what you guys have covered um Anything that I see as something that they're not fully utilizing is something that they're strategically not fully utilizing. We're not using X wrestler now because he's going to be a big pop when we use him later, right? We're not using X footage now because we have this plan to use it at this time when so and so comes back, or we're holding on to until something like this happens, or maybe we don't have any other good ideas and we can bring up some of this X X stuff. Um, you know, there's a lot of laying in wait. That's why you had. Ultimate Warrior come back the one year, and then Sting comes back the next year to give a maximum a maximum impact of each of those things happening, right? Um, and and that is so smartly planned. Even NXT, I think, is being massively utilized. If anything, they should be copying what they're doing in NXT and using it on the main roster. No. No, absolutely not. Because if you copy what's um, happening, you when, when you copy what is NXT and you put it on a broader scale like that, it's a different audience, and now you've watered down what NXT does, and it doesn't. No, seem but special I, I'm say, I'm saying I'm saying like the storytelling, and like would you would you ever see something on Raw like the three part series they did on Finn Balor? No, no, you wouldn't. But you should, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because maybe if you did something like that on a guy like I don't know Ryback. It might get us more invested in Ryback as opposed to him being a guy who snorts and screams and occasionally reads self-help books. I think if anything, no, I agree. I think th there's a difference between ripping NXT off, yeah, and like a, like we mentioned before, like taking characters and just throwing them into that world, and and you know if they fail, well, that's because they fail, you know, like you. But you can take aspects of the three-part series stuff and make these people on the TV feel more like investments. Mm -hmm. And 
Like, like that's a, I think that's the biggest issue with the Divas Revolution is that we don't know these new people. Right, right. You know, in, I, for the most part, we don't know their motivations. We don't know where they come from. We don't know, you know, why they are they're doing this. Why they're why they're important. You know, and if they did, I feel like they would be more successful. And if they did that with the roster completely, I don't think we would have the issues we have in the in the past month or so as far as like ratings go. Because because the development for the NXT off. people have happened on NXT and it didn't carry over. The mass did not see that. That's why I worry about Bailey. I'm like, all of her development has happened there as a character. And then was she just get dropped into Raw? You know, and do we start from square one? And I think maybe that's even what happened with Adam Raw, Rose. Raw needs... Raw needs... It, it's not an issue of NXT people succeeding on their own. Raw needs fixed. <laughs> yeah, it needs in a complete overhaul and... Sorry, it does because ratings have been dropping. We don't. You don't need to watch Raw. You don't like it's the. They're just they'll put on matches and and that's it. Like you need to get the only way that you're going to increase ratings is to get people invested. Mm-hmm. I, I, that's I, only that's the only way people are going to keep watching. For my official answer, uh, I I'm thinking utilizing that third hour. You could do something very special with that third hour and very different with that third hour. Not necessarily, uh, you know, the idea had been fielded over the, you know, since its inception of being something that we're paying attention to. NXT could be featured in that first hour, but maybe not to that expect. But just, just something different that you're doing there, you know, uh, maybe not so much like, you know, not like Impact did a whole different show for a third hour. Uh, with their what was it reloaded yeah. or something Reac- like that reaction Reac- reaction reaction like n- not like that but but still like like or maybe they use that hour to feature something that's on WWE Network you know what I mean or a half an hour you know to give a little preview let's show you half of the Stone Cold podcast go check out the rest on demand you know I, which I don't know how that would play with USA Network potentially but it could be something special there uh, I, I just I I feel like they just instead of just stretching what we've been doing for years to three hours you could just do something so so different so uh from the chat room we have some comments uh, i i know uh lb you've been kind of commenting on this as well uh oh, yeah. <laughs> so do, do you want to do you want to pull some of these that, that that you liked um well uh hold on, let me scroll up just a little bit here uh garza said easy answer it's roster um uh, Matt Carlin said, uh, more specifically, WWE's youth. They keep hiding behind veterans, but the only way forward is to get younger, comma, cooler. Um, then he said, I take it back. WWE's most untapped resources, its creative team, spend days writing stuff, and then Vince just jacks it up on Monday, and Garza agreed. Uh, but I disagreed, and we've been having a conversation about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that uh, Vince McMahon is a, uh, an easy scapegoat. When something go when something happens in professional wrestling that people don't like, well, clearly it's Vince's fault. Well, to be fair, there are there are some things that happen that you can immediately point to Vince. Sure, that's true, but I mean, when something really good happens, everybody is uh, is quick to play praise Triple H, and no one's saying, you know what, Vince is doing a great job. Vince Vince is a is a faceless scapegoat now, uh, and uh, everything bad is his fault. That's just that's just how uh, how things have shaken out, which I mean, it's a consequence of one being the public face of the company and, uh, uh, you know, two making terrible decisions, <laughs> public, terrible decisions that we've seen. You know what I mean? I just don't know that he's the be all end all that uh, that people think he is. Maybe not anymore. If you uh, want to chime in on this, our, our big question on what is the most untapped resource of WWE right now, uh, let us know. Hashtag WMS Big Question on Twitter, and you have a chance to win IWC's Unbreakable. Insane, insane show. Uh, TNA's knockout uh, dollhouse member Marty Bell was a part of it. Uh, Rhino was in the main event, three-way uh, title match for uh, the World Heavyweight title. Dylan Bostic in a... a Andrew Andrew Palace, uh, uh, Canadian Amazing Race's own Asylum was also on the card as well. A lot of really really cool uh, 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 people on there, and of course the awesome local roster here with the International Wrestling Cartel. Uh, you can check that out in your wrestling. Us. But last week we did have a question that I believe Mad Mike had submitted, which was, "What would you draft as your uh, new Fed from each current Fed?" You know, one I think we did one from NXT, one from WWE, one from TNA, one from ROH, one from. Did we say New Japan, or well, that was kind of an add-on later, wasn't it? 
Uh, but we did have some responses for that. Our buddy Ed Burke, 37, Patreon supporter, on the Twitter said, Baylor, Neville, Lethal, and Carter. I'm with you on that one. And uh, our buddy uh, Tony Beardsley uh, emailed in. He says, from WWE, I would take Brock Lesnar for the drawing factor now and add uh, on of uh, Heyman for the voice of the company. From NXT, I'd take Apollo Crews for uh, him being a young and as athletic as he is and uh, what he can grow up into. And uh, ROH guy would be Adam Cole to be the future of the company. My TNA girl would be Gail Kim to be the head of the women's division. So thank you, everybody. Those guys are going to get a copy of uh, RWA's uh, Bloody Harvest 2015, including an awesome three-way with friend of the show, Jason Gorey, taking on Amazing Red and Sanjay Dutt for the RWA Cruiserweight Championship. Thank you so much uh, to those guys for participating. I hope you guys enjoy that show and uh, let us know uh, your thoughts on the show in general. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or uh, at Mayhem Show on Twitter or on the voicemail, 412-206-WMS0. Like somebody, I'm trying to figure out, Will, did you just email me your answer to the big question? Or, no, I emailed you the big question. Oh, that is so helpful. Thank you so much. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, we did get a little bit of a voicemail from our friend in the mainstream media, Matt Carlins, and more. I don't know. If, and here you go. Maybe. Maybe this will work. Maybe this will work. Maybe it'll work. Hey, everybody. It's your pal in the mainstream media. I am driving home from work with my wife. Hello. My wife. And uh, I just wanted to give you guys a real quick call because I know everyone's worried how Jennifer responded to the Shield little reunion on Monday night. I don't want to talk about it. She's disappointed, but Jen and everyone else out there, I think it really came off well. I mean, look at this, all right? They stood together yeah. for a few moments, all right? Seth kind of found his balls again and kind of stepped up. No one hit one another, all right? They never struck one another, all right? And basically all it's Seth progress. did was, you know, walk away at the end. I think this is something to build upon. I think we're closer to a full official reunion than ever before. I've got a good feeling. Give me the damn phone. All right. No, yeah, just a moment. No, no. This is, this is what I... I was happy to see them. That was great. I squealed like a 12-year-old schoolgirl seeing One Direction. I did. What? But I'm just sick of constant... The WWE and myself, it's like a bad relationship. Bad enough where you know you need to get out, but yet they're sweet talking you, they're telling you everything that you want to hear, they're telling you everything you want to, they're showing you everything that you want to see. You know what? You know what? I'm sick of the sweet talk. You know what? I'm sick of the sweet talk. I just want to get screwed in the good way, not that way. I just can I swear? I just want to get fucked. There you go. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'm ashamed now. <laughs> Well, okay. I, was that an extension of the um, of the uh, 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 Total Divas uh, therapy hour that you've yes. been having, Mad Mike? Cause, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Interesting perspective on the Shield comeback uh, the other night. Um, mm -hmm. um, comments? Uh, yeah, Jen Collins. As soon as Rob was off the air, uh, I, I I asked her if it was good for her, and she said she had she said she had blue balls from it. So I don't think it was quite everything. That people who want the shield back wanted, but you know it was pretty close. You know, I mean, at, at a certain point, after after a lot of things have sort of run their course, we're going to get that little shield reunion, just like we had the evolution reunion uh, a couple years ago uh, against the shield of all things. I mean, it, it that was last year, wasn't it? That was simply a year ago, wasn't that it? That was just last year. That sorry. was just last year. Huh? When, when we saw Blue Tista, Blue Tista, the Destroyer. Um, well, I, this pop screen is really pissing me off right now, by the way. I don't, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm distracted by this thing. Somebody else have commentary while I fix my microphone. What is happening here? This place is falling apart. Please support our Patreon so I can find a pop screen that will stay in place. Please, please. Eamon, 
thoughts? I yes. <laughs> <laughs> Shields are great. Um, I don't know. I, I I'm not a hun- I, w- I wasn't hundred percent on what happened last night. I feel that it really didn't make a whole lot of sense that Seth Rollins just randomly wanted the team with the Shield to fight the Wyatts. I, I was curious as to why Roman and Dean even said yes. Because, like, you'd think the characters of Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose would just be like, uh, no, we'd rather have a handicap match than the guy that turned his back on us. Let me share my thoughts and experiences of last night. As as I told you guys <laughs> off air, I was really tired. And I dozed off that, like, last hour a little bit. So it was, like, a little fuzzy about what happened. I don't think I saw Ric Flair come out, for instance. Was that worthwhile, or did he just introduce somebody else? He just introduced Roman Reigns. So that thread kept going. Really? Roman Reigns? Okay, whatever. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. So I woke up, and it's the middle of the main event. I'm like, oh, cool, the six man's happening. And I'm, like, I'm going, and I'm watching, and I'm watching, and everything seems right. And, like, cool, they found something for the six man. Then I'm looking, and I'm like, wait, the shield's back together. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, all right, all right, all right. I'm watching. I'm like, okay, maybe they did a thing. Maybe they did a weird thing, and he had to be in the match or something, right? I mean, he's he's gonna walk away or something, right? Now I'm watching, and I'm watching. Rowan Rain, uh, 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 Eric Rowan is back. So now I, I'm like, you know, again that thought, and and then somebody said, were you, you? Did you think you were watching a repeat or something? Um, I was like, yes, but I still recognize Braun Strowman. So, eh? uh, so that that's that's where I was with that whole whole situation. Um, if they did have to do a little bit of a diversion from uh, people getting injured, whatever the case may be, I think it was uh, definitely something to get people talking, to get people interested. Do we know what the rating did last night? Did 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 they uh, uh, survive the the barrage of Monday Night Football and the Star Wars trailer last night? Uh, I don't know. I don't think they did. I don't. I don't. I don't think it's going to help at all because it's not the thing you did last night. It's the thing you've been doing. Right, I think it's actually yeah. how these ratings work. It, you are you are the longest running episodic thing be, uh, on television, and you tout that. But also, hey, we've seen it all before, and we know where this is going. And maybe I want to check out some football on a Star Wars trailer. That's going to make LB cry before he goes to bed. Yeah, uh, just I just looked it up by the way. Uh, Rod did a two point two one, uh, which is down from last week's two point three three. They're getting closer so. to SmackDown's rating. That's not good. No. So. That's not good. <laughs> wow. But apparently viewership viewership was up, but but overall rating was down. So I mean, you you, you I think maybe you saw the legend in the show and you're like, okay, you got people, but then people tune out. You know, it's well. I mean, when you start off a show with Stone Cold Steve Austin, people are going to be interested. But then when you realize, oh, he's literally not doing anything, then they'll tune out. Oh, and then Shawn Michaels comes out and you realize, oh, he's just going to you know, say mean things to Seth Rollins. Okay. And, and steal a kid's pizza. Can we talk about that? Yeah. Can we talk about how Shawn Michaels apparently isn't getting fed? In, but he's from San Antonio, well, right, Eamon? Sword. Sword. Yeah, he's sword. from San Antonio. He, he was wearing camouflage. He assumed that kid could not see him, so he was foraging. Eamon, is that how it works in San Antonio? <laughs> no, it doesn't. Okay, thank uh, you for that randomly, qualification. You know, randomly walk your way up to somebody and just steal their food. That's not, how, that's not how human beings work. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thanks for that, Eamon. Thanks. All right. Uh, so on that note, thank you. Thank you for the voicemail. If you guys want to chime in again, that's 412-206-WMS0 uh, or the Good Times of Wrestling Mayhem Show dot com. And Sorg, there, there is a SmackDown spoiler posted in the chat room. Do, do we do we want to talk about it? Oh, no, 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 no. OK, no, no, right. no, no, I, no. I will not. No, I will no, not no, 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 no. Happy to see it. Thank you for spoiling because I'll probably be too busy to watch SmackDown like I was last weekend anyways. Um, mm-hmm. But no, I don't want to talk about it. So, Sorg, you might say that it makes you feel fine. <sighs> what? 
I don't have a problem with it. Never, never mind. I don't never have mind. a problem it's, with it. The thing you're going to Oh, it's summer. Summer. Okay, I got you. I got the tune. Okay, yeah, I, got, yeah, I, I see what's is, happening. Is, I, I see what you're doing there. I see what you're doing there. And I don't <laughs> appreciate it. Okay? Okay. <laughs> Guys, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? Oh, I get it now. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, is the that worst. One had a, that one had a time lapse. I love it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> That wasn't the leg. That was just my stupid brain. <laughs> <laughs> That's there. You go. What'd you learn uh, in wrestling this week, Eamon Payton? Oh, jeez. Uh, What'd you learn this week, Mad this? Mike? I learned that Riz is eventually gonna have to watch Impact Wrestling with us, and I'm so excited because Great Khali is coming to Impact, motherfuckers. And he'll be <laughs> still. I, 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 that company just die. I want to watch the last episode so I can say I watched the whole series. God damn it, can it just end? You you're acting like it's gonna be around to the point where they, they make it to India or whatever. Like that's not happening. Eamon, it will be it's around when television is no longer around. Wally watches episodes of Impact. What? <laughs> <laughs> Wally okay. watches two things. That one video and fucking episodes of Impact for Mahabali Shira doing this. <laughs> I don't even know what we're talking about, but his name was brought up. His name was brought up on a Coca Vanna podcast. And I'm like, oh yeah, that guy. Um okay. Uh, because uh, uh uh Eugene was talking about how he went to uh he was part of the training personnel for that India trip that got him over here. Um, but anyways, okay. Okay. Uh, Eamon, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? I, I was, I learned from wrestling this week that, uh, somebody told Paige what, who, uh, what, what did she call her name? Yannick Sally Jesse Raphael. She, someone, someone had to tell Paige who Sally Jesse Raphael is. Cause there's no way she knows who that is. No. Now, Eamon, who told you who Sally Jesse Raphael is? I still don't know who Sally Jesse Raphael is. <laughs> All right, wait, wait. I got another test. I, I got another test for Eamon. Phil Donahue. Yes. <laughs> I've heard of Phil Donahue. Oh, okay. yeah. Well, actually, I, I think I can tell you what he does. I believe there's a wrestling connection with Phil Donahue, if I'm not mistaken. So <laughs> there's a wrestling connection with Sally Jesse Raphael too. But was there? Yeah, yeah, there was. Oh. Yeah, it, it was a very small one, but it, I mean, they were they were both interviewers from the late eighties. Well, they had like you know like uh, uh, daytime talk shows. Yeah, daytime yes. talk shows like the pre Jerry Springer, basically. Um, um, yeah, it was like, Maury like before pre, Maury like was pre Maury. Ricky, pre Ricky Lake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know who Ricky Lake is? Yes, I know. Oh, good. Oh, good. Like okay, is. okay, okay. <laughs> we figured it out. How old Eamon is, or at least how old I his... got the tail. I got the tail end of Ricky Lake, or at least how old his soul is. Uh, LB, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? Uh, I learned that the the chat room is fucking awesome. Why am I not just in the chat all the time? This is great. <laughs> yeah, what you just like this fucking <laughs> fucking a great conversation about WWE with uh, with Garza and Matt. This is good shit. It's almost like you just started podcasting. It's it's almost like you just had to scroll a little bit for the magic. <laughs> scroll a little bit further down. <laughs> Sorry, what you learn you, this week? You just have to look below the fold, LB. Just look below the fold. That's what she said. Hmm. Hmm. Sorry, sorry. What you learn this week? What did I learn this week? What did I learn this week from pro wrestling? One, um, I appreciate, uh. No, 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 that's not it. That's not it. Can I talk <laughs> about that one? No, I can't talk about that one. That's an Indie Mayhem show thing. Um, <laughs> there's a lot that happened Saturday night. Um, I learned that uh, the best thing about pro wrestling is when the script gets thrown out. Well, you've seen a lot of these elements from back in the day uh, with, uh, with uh, the Attitude era, era I'm sure. And no, we're not calling this show just below the fold. Um, but two incidents. Incidents? I don't really incidents. There were awesome things that happened. 
uh, one by our friend Jenny DeMarco that gave the most amazing rant about love and the term plumber slam came up from the crowd uh, to rounding applause and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and a certain thing that happened on the show that I know was not planned and, uh, and, and just turned into a pretty, can I say a magical night? <laughs> um, that almost made me run out of tape, but maybe we'll talk about that a little more on the Indie Mayhem show from the chat room. Nobody has answered or it's been buried because LB's having two great conversations over there. And I need a stall because I closed my tab with the Facebook and what everybody learned on there. Uh, so, yeah, what'd you learn in the chat room, guys? Uh, LB is is keeping you a little, a little big on that. Um, and I'm sorry, I have what people learn from wrestling on Facebook. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. I have my tabs open. Hey. Uh, Daniel Daniel Hooven learned that Ryback is unstoppable. That's all um, right. I call that into question, but okay. Uh, Matt Carlin's learned that you will never be friends with Brock Lesnar. Probably true. Probably true. Um, Tony Garza learned that booking WWE legends must be pretty cheap nowadays if you can get guys like Austin, Shawn Michaels, and Ric Flair just to introduce wrestlers to their matches. Hmm. And sometimes not even that, because he just introduced Taker to talk. Uh, and uh, Kyle... Kyle uh, learned that Evolve is now the place you want to be to get closer to getting signed by WWE, and Tommaso Ciampa getting signed is another step for WWE's talent-stacked future. Excellent points. All right. Thank you so much. And, and also, Sorg, your wife learned that you are a meanie head. What did I do? What did I do? Just because I didn't like a title suggestion. <laughs> just because. You know what? <laughs> Let's just call this Plumber Slam. You know, here's... Wrestling now, Plumber. Now, Sorg, Sorg, what? does that have to do with slamming Justin Plummer or slamming T.L. Hopper? Can we call it Plummer Fest? <laughs> no? No? That might, that might be an indie Mayhem Show title. Guys, thanks for joining us. Wrestling Mayhem Show. This has been the 492nd edition of the Wrestling Mayhem Show. What? 492nd. It seems different when you say it that way. You can join us for... Uh, <laughs> Hopefully a nine hundred or four hundred yeah, hopefully a four hundred and ninety third edition next week at WrestlingMamshow dot com. Live at WrestlingMamshow dot com. We start around nine PM Eastern time over here. And uh that's a different time zone for Eamon, because San Antonio yes, where they is. steal food. Um but <laughs> when they're wearing camo. If you see somebody in camo, if you see somebody in camo walking the streets of San Antonio, you need he will to take your pizza. Clutch your slice your of pizza. pizza, clutch it tight to your chest. Clutch that soda tight Sword. to your chest. He will Sword. have it. He will take it. He will take it from you. A, a guy in his 40s, maybe 50s, who still refers to himself as a heartbreak kid. I was just saying that. Sorg, Sorg, if I put on camo and go into Slice on Broadway, can I literally just take any slice of pizza I want? You can. Then you'll be okay. arrested. Okay. But you can... uh Steal the great savings of this free podcast at WrestlingMayhemShow.com and subscribe to us and uh, follow us on social media, especially the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group with a lot of great conversation going on. Uh, you can also uh, check out the great articles. Mainstream Matt Carlins is going, doing some good stuff every Thursday. He's also writing the uh, Round the Indies over at IndieWrestling.us. So please join that and become part of that conversation as well and discover some good stuff. I feel like I got a little bit of a comic man, comic guy voice on that discover it guys um <laughs> and then followed by snorting that's great too i'm sorry I'm, i need, worst co- podcast I need coffee ever. Worst podcast ever um <laughs> thank you to our great <laughs> chat room at live the wrestling com. thank you thank you to our friend basic sickness at basic sickness.com get free music uh much like what you hear at the beginning and end of this and the indie mayhem show thank you to our patreon supporters patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show and uh thank you everybody thank you everybody Sorry. for joining us yes can I, can I throw out a quick plug okay i was getting to so- that now, pop a lunchbox. Oh, no, not for that. It's plugs. I'm sorry, I didn't know you were doing that. Pop a lunchbox. What's going on? No, I almost forgot. But thank you. We're bringing it back around. Um, <laughs> uh, 
I am uh, uh, participating in the Extra Life video game marathon this year alongside Bobby F. J. Town, alongside uh, Jesse Dvorak, and a handful of other people. I think that's all that's joined so far, but more people should join. Anyway, uh, please, if you can, donate. Give what you can. Any amount would be great. Uh, go to bit.ly slash LB Extra, L B E X T R A, and, uh, and please, please, please. Donate if you can. Thank you very much. Go check it out. Support a great cause, great people. At Children's Mad- Miracle Network. Mad Mike at Mad Mike 488 Yeah, that's me. And uh, we're also going to be having the midweek war again on Thursday. And oh, God, I'm going to yell at Garza about TNA probably. I'm just <laughs> guessing. Probably. And uh, I think, I think um, I'm also going to talk to the crew and see if they want to do something for Breaking Ground. I don't know if we're going to do like a post show wrap up on that. I think it'll be interesting. It's 10 episodes long. So, might yeah, do something like that. That might be good. That might be real good. Um, and aim and add aim and two, please. Uh, great phone connection there, finally. Yeah. Uh, he's the voice <laughs> of voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling and joins us as a co host on uh, Indie Wrestling Mayhem. Indie Mayhem Show. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Yeah, but definitely check me out on uh, Twitter at Aim Two Please and check out Inspire Pro Wrestling on Twitter at Inspire Pro Reds. And tired Mike. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I, I, I was talking about TNA. And oh yeah, it just kind of creeps up. Thank you, every at yeah. Sorgatron, SorgatronMedia.com, Sorgatron.com. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.